If we live on a ball with a surface that is mostly water, all water must curve in a bowl, a bath, a swimming pool, lake, a river, and the sea. All the water on this globe ball must curve. How curved should it be? And how far is the horizon? Emma is looking for the beach on the other side of the horizon. Her location is here. The beach is 8 miles or 12.9 kilometers away. Allowing for Emma's eye height above the water, 1.5 meters, 5 feet. The geometric horizon will be 2.72 miles away or 4.37 kilometers. The beach is hidden by the horizon by 5.67 meters, over 18 feet at this distance. If the beach is 11 miles away, the horizon distance remains the same. The hidden amount of beach will be 13.95 meters, that's over 45 feet. If you had a warehouse, 500 meters long. Level in the middle, with a perfectly flat floor. If it flooded, the water in the middle would be deeper by 2 cm than the outer walls. If we live on a ball, that is mostly water. Curved water should be very easy to find. One man made it his mission to look for it. Dr. John D. The date is Thursday, the 6th of August, 2020. At his home in Sussex, on the south coast of England. It is 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Dr. John checks out the weather for Worthing and Shoreham. Worthing and Shoreham's weather conditions are ideal for the observations ahead. He needs to be in position to film at slack tide, an hour before the low tide time. For today's observations, the camera is the Nikon P900. This camera is capable of filming the moon. The target is Rampion Wind Farm, situated over 8 miles off the Sussex coast near Worthing and Shoreham. The whole complex covers over 27 square miles of sea. Dr. John's observation point will be here. The main target is the last six turbines to the west, marked in red. Each of the turbines are numbered 1 to 6. The first is over 8 miles away from the observation point. The sixth is over 11 miles. The wind turbines are massive structures, each of the three blades are 55 meters long. To the middle turbine section, it's 80 meters. Overall, they are 140 meters in height. 
the base of the turbines and the loading platforms at the observation's reference points. The base is 5 meters in diameter. The high tide marks on the bases are easy to distinguish on the yellow background. They come up from the sea about 2.5 meters. The loading platform is approximately 12.5 meters from its base to the sea below. If we live on a ball with a radius of 6,371 kilometers or 3,959 miles, at Dr. John's planned observation height above the sea of 3.5 feet, just over 1 meter, the horizon will be 2.3 miles away, 3.7 kilometers. Turbine 1. At a distance of 8.4 miles, 13.5 kilometers, the hidden height from the sea should be 24 feet, 7.6 meters. Turbine 2. 28 feet, 8.6 meters. 3. 32.7 feet, that's 10 meters. Turbine 4. Hidden by 37.6 feet, 11.5 meters. 5, 48 feet, 14.7 meters. And turbine 6 will be hidden by 53 feet, just over 16 meters. The loading platforms of turbines 5 and 6 should not be visible from Dr. John's position. The tide marks on all six turbines will all be obscured by the horizon. One last sip. Then, Worthing. The camera tripod is placed into position. The center of the camera lens will be 3.5 foot, just over 1 meter from sea level. To his rear, the beach houses and Worthing Sailing Club are about 300 meters away. Conditions are better than expected. The sun is low in the sky, it sets in 40 minutes. He has hardly any wind at his back. All the wind farm is visible with the naked eye. It's time for the observation.
If we live on a ball, that is mostly water. These observations are not possible. Analysis of the observations. We can clearly see all the turbines from 1 to 6 are fully visible. We can even see the reflection at the bottom of the turbine base in the sea. The horizon is visible well beyond the last turbine. The reduction in height is clearly due to perspective. There is no sign of any curvature. Every base and tide mark was visible on every turbine throughout the wind farm, including the substation. No curvature seen. When the observation height was reduced to 2 foot, 0.7 meters, the tide marks and bases were still visible. Visible from the furthest turbine base to the closest. Several times during the observation, reflections of the turbines could be seen. The closest ship observed called the Pacific Worker was over 8 miles away. The plimsoll lines are clearly visible. They should have been well hidden by the horizon. Then the biggest blow to any curvature, the ship seen over 20 miles away. The oil tanker, the Eagle Kinabalu. The ship's location was tracked using myshiptracking.com. This is its location at 1 minute past 7. The thin red line shows its course. Its distance was measured using the marine traffic site. It was 18.1 nautical miles away from Dr. John, that's over 20 miles. At 20 miles, 32 kilometers, this massive vessel should have been hidden by 70 meters or 228 feet. Only the funnel of the ship should have been visible. If we live on a globe that is mostly water, all water must curve. No curvature whatsoever was observed. The observations are mathematically impossible. This is showing turbine 1 and 6. With the ship at 20.8 miles, replaced with the turbine, marked as S. At an observer height of 3.5 feet, 1.07 meters. This is what should have been observed. Then at 2 feet, 0.7 meters, even less of the turbines should have been seen. To have seen the base of turbine 1 to 6 and the ship at the horizon line. At the observer height of 3.5 feet 1.07 meters. Turbine 1 would have to move up by 7.6 meters. Turbine 6 by 16 meters. And the ship by 70 meters. At 2 feet, 0.7 meters this would be even more. But in the observation, we see the furthest base rising higher than the nearest. All well above the horizon. All the observed bases would have to raise even more. The furthest object would have to rise the most. The blue dotted lines represent the density of air layers the lowest being the most dense. At each position, there would be no large difference in the height of each section of air. If we are on a globe, it is mathematically and optically impossible to observe this. Let's take a look at the optics at play during the observation. What were the conditions at the time of the observation? The temperature most of the day was at 25 degrees. Humidity was at 45 to 46 percent. Visibility was extremely good. The wind was very low at 3 to 5 miles per hour. The sun being the main driver of the atmosphere was low in the sky. Ideal conditions for the layering of the atmosphere. We see distortion of the turbine blades as they are rotating. The blades at the top have little distortion till they hit an atmospheric layer. 
there is over a mile in distance between the first and last turbine. The turbines all look out of proportion. The generator sections in the middle of the blades should reduce in size due to perspective. The yellow bases width should also be reduced. In this observation they all look the same size. The same again in this shot. The furthest and closest base look the same width. They should look like this. The closest has been magnified by about a third. The furthest by over two times. It's the same again in this shot. This was the same throughout the observation. The further the turbine, the more magnification. This is what they look like on a sunny day. The oil tanker seen at over 20 miles. Seen at two points during the observation. Initially thought to be different ships. After checking direction, the timings, and frame-by-frame -frame analysis, both are the Eagle Kinabalu. The transformation was caught in the observation. The first sighting, the wind speed at that point, reduced the height of the dense layer to the lower main deck. As the ship moved into a layer of air, at roughly the same height as at our turbines, the transformation can be seen. The atmosphere layer height at our turbines would be at this level on the ship. At the first observation of the oil tanker, there is a low layer of denser air. The less dense air above is magnifying the whole ship and at the same time stretching the image we see. The smaller ship is what we would see with no dense atmosphere. Next the magnification due to the density of the atmosphere, then the distortion at the top. As the ship moved to the higher level of density, below the yellow line, it is compressed and stretched out. The same as out turbine bases. The funnel in the upper layer is now magnified to look bigger at the top. As we look across the sky, it may seem like an endless expanse of blue or grey. In reality, it's teeming with tiny particles of water vapour. They have a significant impact on the magnification of objects, sometimes creating an almost surreal level of magnification. When light passes through water particles in the atmosphere, it is refracted and scattered in various directions. This creates a magnifying effect making objects appear larger or closer than they actually are. For example, on a misty morning, a distant mountain range may appear more defined and closer than on a clear day. With minimal particles of vapor in the air, the sun looks small. When the vapor builds up, each particle acts as a lens. The sun is then seen larger than it actually is. The higher the moisture content and size of droplet in the air, the higher the magnification. The moisture content or amount of water droplets per cubic centimeter of air magnifies objects within or beyond it. Looking through a layer of air with the same moisture content, 
an object close to the observer will be magnified less than an object further away. As the object's light passes through each layers of moist air, each layer magnifies it more. The further the object, the more layers of magnification it passes through. We see the moon in the sky as the sun is just about to rise. Note the size of the moon through the vapor-rich atmosphere. As the sun rises, it drastically reduces the amount of vapor in the air. As this is happening, the moon can be seen to shrink in size. As the water vapor in the air is reduced, so is the magnifying effect. The same again with the sun. As the camera rises through less vapor-rich air, it gets smaller. When the air is less humid, with less vapor, as the sun moves away, it reduces in size. All water particles hold an electric charge. This is most obvious when we see lightning. A thunder cloud can be made up of several layers of positive and negatively charged water particles. This creates layers of positive and negative charged vapor. It's not just clouds that hold an electric charge. From the ground up every water vapor particle holds a charge. The water particles in the air increases in voltage by 100 volts to 500 volts per meter. The Kelvin water dropper experiment can produce thousands of volts with just running water. This shows the true potential power of the vapor in our air. Each water particle is at varying states of charge. The larger the particle, the larger the potential charge. When the sun is out, it drives the system through convection. Also, as with solar charges used to make electricity from the sun. It alters the state of charge in each particle. When the sun sets and the wind is at low speed, the particles will settle into layers due to each particle's charge state. The same as in the clouds. The yellow line could be a layer of negatively charged water particles. In this case, it's negatively charged pollen. This will attract and create another layer of positive vapor. Each individual layer magnifies in different ways, as we can see in this sunrise. As we observe the turbines in the foreground, the bottom section is compressed, distorted, and magnified. As the turbine blades reach the top, they are magnified and stretched, each layer changes the optics of what we see. We do not see curvature in our everyday lives. What we see is ruled by perspective. Simply, it's objects looking smaller the further away they are. With particles of water in the air acting as a lens. The rise and setting of the sun we see is the optical effect of the atmosphere. When moisture is high we see a larger sun or moon rising and falling. When the sun moves away, it looks the same size, due to the lensing effect of each layer. When there is little moisture in the air, the sun and moon reduce in size as they move away. If you look into this with an open mind, you will soon realize that living on this ball, with a surface of mostly water, is impossible. <laughs>